It's sure not, because I'm not supposed to talk about anything that happens on jury duty. And I try to be very good about that. None of what I told you is specific to any case. It's all about, uh, it's just about the people on jury duty, which I can talk about, because they are weird. But we always go out to lunch together. It's pretty nice. It's like the uh, Law and Order episodes where they're not based on any crimes. It's almost identical to very specific crimes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Although I, I don't even do that, because really the, the trials we have are not interesting. It's the dynamic of the group. Because you've got the Karen, then you've got me, who, you know, I'm me. Um, and then you've got girls who, married women who flirt with, with guys. Then you've got the people who are just super quiet. You have... Yeah, that's actually, actually somebody on Jerry Dew is like, we should turn this into a sitcom. I'm like, please don't play yourself. I'll play me. <laughs> All right, I did record that on the live stream. If you're watching this and you know me in any spectrum outside of this class, disclaimer, I am sorry. I said all of this for comedic purpose. Anyways, um, so. For those of you on the live stream, this is the problem that I handed out early this morning. The idea is come up with a tab and an equivalent circuit for this. Okay. Did you do it? Okay. Pause, uh, pause the live stream and figure out this problem, or you can just watch it live. But I would advise you try to actually do this problem because uh, Understanding how to how to do Tevin and equivalent circuits is kind of important because it's going to be on both your quiz for this week and it's going to be on your exam next next month, two months from now, next month. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So, um, before we start on this, uh, I'm going to remind you of something I've said, and I'm going to kind of phrase it in a different way. So, when we're dealing with equivalent circuits, Okay. Anytime you combine in parallel, meaning you have two resistors that are in parallel and you combine them, you're going to remove a loop. Okay? Anytime you combine in series, series, it's the French spelling. Yeah, ho, ho, ho. I'm combining in series. You remove a node. Okay. This again is why these are exactly opposite to each other. And yes, Ivana, I told you this yesterday. I just figured it'd probably be really helpful for everybody. Um, it's not all about you, Ivana. Come on. Thank you. I'm sorry too. I feel bad now. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay, but we can also take these two concepts and we can flip it around, okay? When you expand into parallel, okay, this is doing the reverse. Basically, when you combine to parallel and then you step back in your circuits to where now an equivalent resistance becomes a parallel resistance, you're going to add a loop which is just the opposite of what I wrote up here. But when you add the loop, you know the voltage across that component. Okay, once you know the voltage across the component, you know the voltage across both components that are in parallel, which means you can figure out the current. 
Okay, similarly, when you combine, when you expand in series, you add a node back in, and when you add a node, you should know the current. Okay, whatever current is going through that equivalent resistance is going through both of the resistances in series which means it's also the current going in and out of that node that you are creating, okay? And I'll show you an example of how, we're, how this principle applies when we're doing equivalent circuits as we solve this. All right, so we're gonna have to solve this problem twice. Why? One, yeah, one for the open circuit voltage, one for the short circuit voltage. We have to solve this twice, there's no way of getting around that, okay? So, we'll just, we'll start with an open circuit voltage. We're gonna do this equation this way. I can probably move the camera over, which is nice. I probably need to plug this camera in, which is not nice. I'll be right back. Seems like you take the same approach to live streaming than I do. And some, what do you call those actions? <laughs> took like a film course once. <laughs> <laughs> makes you an expert, right? No. <laughs> See, so that's the irony. When it's so boring that you can't do well. See, when they like forced me to take an arts class in high school and I had to take an acting class in the yeah. first day. Okay. I'm trying to give myself a little bit more board space on this live stream. Man, I hate live streaming class. Oh yeah, I got my first Russian comment. Heck yeah! Mmm! Oh yeah! Uh, vom dot ong. Thanks, bro. Okay. Let's continue in class. Um. I may be mentally unstable, <laughs> which really only comes out at eight o'clock in the morning. Ah, all the stories you guys have heard. Wait, <laughs> Matt just responded. <laughs> Hello, comrades. <laughs> he really is just there for the comments. Oh man, dang it, Matt. You're not even here and you made me laugh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Um, so let's go ahead and solve this problem here. Uh, we're just gonna solve the open, open, open circuit voltage, okay? Now, I'm gonna give you a hint. We only need to know the voltage at node two and node four. We don't need to know the voltage at three. Sorry, Evan. <laughs> Um, however, however, I can go through how to solve it to make, you know, because it is really good information to know. Knowing how to do an equivalent circuit will really help you when you have to do an equivalent circuit on the test. Okay. Usually, usually. Um, so, I can talk through the process of getting to node three because I think that would be helpful. Okay. All right. So first of all, we start off by identifying what is the first equivalent circuit we're gonna make. Here, looking at all of this, 
These two are in series, which means this becomes our first victim. We are combining in series, which means we are going to remove a node. Okay. So, equivalent circuit number one. We got this, 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 and then we got this, and then we got this. And this is REQ1, okay? And here, REQ1 is equal to 100 plus 50 equals 150 ohms. And that's because they're in series, okay? I feel like everybody really understands the how to calculate equivalent resistances. So I may just speed through that piece. Next equivalency here. We have these two are in parallel, okay? Now, again, it comes down to they both have the same starting node and ending node, which means they are in parallel, okay? None of the rest of these are really, can be considered in series because if you look at it here, this node, which is node two, has a lot of currents going out of it and one current going into it. So we really can't say any of the components are in series there, okay? Similarly, we can say that about every other node. Unfortunately, there's no series connection there because there's no, no one node in, one node out that we can call series, okay? So, second equivalent. We've got our current source. We got this thing. We got this thing. We got this thing. And then we got this thing. And then we got this thing, okay? And we'll call this REQ2. And it's the sum of these two resistors. Okay, and then here REQ2 is going to be equal to, because they're in parallel, 1 over REQ2 is equal to 1 over REQ1 plus 1 over R3, R5, which is equal to 1 over 150 plus 1 over 75. So if you do the calculations, in an appropriate manner. <sighs> Forgot what I was doing. Nice job, me. Up top. I do have a green screen. So if you solve this, REQ2 is equal to 50 ohms, okay? All right, so now our next equivalent circuit, you'll notice there is one node, and here this is node four, where we have one current coming in, one current coming out. We can take that, combine them in series, and remove that node. Okay, so let's do that. So our next equivalent circuit looks like this, looks like this, looks like this, and then looks like this. Okay, sweet. We'll call this REQ3, okay? And here REQ3 is being added in series, so REQ3 is equal to REQ2 plus R6, which is equal to 100 ohms, okay? So now if we look at this circuit, we have one loop that only has two resistors in it, which by the way means, yeah, they, they both start and end at the same node. So we're gonna remove the loop. Because 
Another piece that you need to re realize here when you're doing the equivalent circuits is if you have one node that has one input, one output, it's there in series. If you have one loop that has one input and one output, then you have there in parallel. Again, the whole opposite dichotomy there between nodes and loops, currents and voltages, all that fun jazz. Okay, and we'll call this REQ4. Okay, now REQ, well, oop. one over REQ4 is equal to one over REQ3 plus one over R5. You know, I could have just walked over there and read that instead. Nope, that's R4. Dang it! Where's that recycling bin? I was gonna kick it, but it looks like there's actually a dent in it. So, hashtag end the violence against recycling bins. I'm gonna be like that one senator from New York who was like, hashtag me too. And he was like a huge part of it. And then he was caught up in it because apparently he was sexually harassing all of his female employees. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good times. You didn't hear about that? It was a Democrat, like, senator from our uh, House Representatives guy from New York who was very much championing the Me Too movement until they found out that he had intimidated a whole bunch of his female staff or like shown his genitals, I don't know. It was, I don't know. It was, it was something that was really, really egregious. And we're all sitting here like, uh-huh. So basically what it is, and then a whole bunch of people from Hollywood were like, yeah, me too. And then they were eventually outed and you got Harvey Weinstein who was probably the instigator. And, and then you had Terry Crews come out and talk about Hollywood producers that were horrible. And it, it, was, it was an entire event that kind of, uh, where a whole bunch of people who were quote unquote supporting it were doing it because they wanted to be like, I'm cool. And then they were also part of the problem. <laughs> yeah, well, anyways. So here this ends up being uh, REQ4 is equal to 50 ohms, okay? And that's just because both of those are 100. I'm gonna stop here, okay? I am not going to build the next equivalent circuit because the thing about building the next equivalent circuit is these two can be combined in series to create one single equivalent resistor. If we do that, we remove a node, okay? In order to back expand in series, we have to know the current. If we know the current already, because we, we already do, we don't need to do that last equivalency. It, it doesn't really help us at all. Although it does, I mean, you can figure out voltage at node one if you really want to. Do. <laughs> that was appropriate. <laughs> okay, but I'm not going to because it's, it's not necessary here. If I go find that last one, it's not gonna give me any additional information that I can't already figure out from this circuit, okay? So, that's fun. Um, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna establish my node voltage table. Okay, um, here we have five nodes. And then A, B. A is connected to two, so I'm gonna go ahead and write that up here. B is connected to four, I'm gonna go ahead and write that up here. Basically what that means is if I figure out these two voltages, we're done. Nothing more, it, it, it's over. Game over, we found the princess in the correct castle and it was probably in world one. It's made for a very short game. Okay, so. We do know one voltage, it's five. Do we know a second voltage? Uh, 
Five is zero. It's because it's connected to ground. Can you calculate one? We can calculate one now that we've gotten here. But, but because this is a current source, we have no clue what the voltage is that it's inputting. The voltage that it's putting into the system is dependent on the system. Well, and on the capabilities of the voltage source here, but. That's what, yeah, that's what we're going to have to do. Yeah. We have five. That one's also five. All right, so what we'll do is we'll calculate these two voltages. We'll figure out node voltage one and two. Why not? Okay, so how do we figure out node voltage one and two? Math. Math. We're gonna use Ohm's law because we're gonna use Ohm's law a lot when it comes to resistance components. Do we know the voltage across this component? Do we know the current through this component? Yes. How do we know that? If we did KCL for this circuit, what you find is that KCL at node one, uh, IS is equal to IR1 at node 2, IR1 is equal to IREQ4, and then at node 3, IREQ4 is equal to IS. Okay, they're all equal to each other. That's what KCL says. Or you could just be like, hey, they're in series. We can ignore that, which is what I tend to do. Um, we're going to see a lot more KVL and KCL in our next unit. But as of yet, we've kind of moved out of, I mean, you understand the implications of parallel and series when it comes to resistors. You don't have to go all the way back to the basics of this is why they exist. It's because of KVL, KCL. Um, but if you really want to, uh, it does help you understand the circuit much better. So according to this, all of our currents are the same. Do we know IS? Yes, that was actually given to us. It's 0.05 amps. So because we know IS, we know the currents through all of these components. Do we know the resistances of these components? Yes, we do. If we know two of those components of Ohm's law, we can figure out the third. All right? That's the component equations piece. So we take our constitutive equations, use our constitutive equations to figure out what we can plug into our component equations. So here, I want to know VREQ4 is equal to IREQ4 times REQ4. That's a, that's a delicious rendition of Ohm's law. All right, so that's equal to 0 0.05 times 50 which is equal to 2.5 volts. Right? You got that, didn't you? Yeah. So you're, you're right so far. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, what the heck, I'll find out VR1 because why not? We're there, we might as well. VR1 is equal to IR1 times R1 is equal to 0 0.05 times 50 is equal to 2.5 volts. Nice. So that's cool. So what does that mean? Well, it means which two node voltages can we figure out right now? Not four. One and two. Why not four? Uh, we did get rid of it. Four, we got rid of, four is right here. We got rid of it here. So we won't be able to figure that one out. Okay, so we got one and two. What is the node voltage at one? Five. I didn't write five on the board. 
Dang you, Zane, being a smart cookie. <sighs> you almost you should have me. I was like. I almost had you, yeah. So the reason why this is five is we know this voltage here is 2.5, which means node voltage two relative to node voltage five is 2.5, okay? If you want to write out the equation for that, V2 minus V5 is equal to VREQ4. What does that mean? It means if you take a node voltage measurement at V2 at node two and a node voltage measurement at node five, you're going to be measuring the voltage across this component, okay? That's what that means. That's all it means. That's all this equation means. So we know this one's zero. We don't know this one, and we know this one's 2.5, which means V2 is equal to 2.5. Move over the zero so it doesn't look like a 50. Okay, but we do the same thing here with VR1. VR1 exists between nodes one and two, which means V1 minus V2 is equal to VR1. We know V2 because this one's 2.5. We know this because it's also 2.5. So V1 minus 2.5 equals 2.5. V1 is equal to five, as Zane pointed out. We have to add them. So you end up with a solid five volts for node one. And yes, by the way, I did this all in my head before I gave you the problem but not like all. I didn't know the I didn't know the numbers. I just Yeah, I just wanted nice numbers. I don't I have no idea if the nice numbers are going to come out when we do the second time. I just knew by making the 75, it was half of 150. Oh, nice gross. Oh well. All right. So, now that we figured out everything here, we go back to this law right here that says when we expand in parallel, we have to know the voltage, okay? Do we know the voltage at the nodes present in this circuit? There's a lot of nodes. Do we know them all? I'm actually gonna draw them in instead of being a lazy individual. Do we know all three of those nodes? Which means we can expand in parallel and solve the next circuit, okay? So we expand this in parallel, great. Once we've expanded this in parallel, the next step is to expand in series, which means we're gonna wanna solve the currents going through each of those individual components, okay? Now, is, is there a .05 amps going through this component right here. It, there was down here. Do we still have 0.05 amps going through this resistor? You said no. <laughs> Copying Zach. The thing about this is this equivalent resistance represents both of these resistances. The amount of current that goes into the equivalent resistance is the amount of equivalent resistance that goes into all parallel resistors, okay? So if we summed this the current going through both of these, it would equal to 0.05, okay? Just a little anecdote there. Similarly, when we combine things in series, if we summed the voltages across these, it's equal to the voltage across this one component. Okay, it's just a fun thing the equivalent resistance does. So we don't actually know how much current is going through this component right now. Nor do we know how much current is going through this component. But we need to figure out those currents so that we can expand in series. So we'll do that. We're stepping back to this one. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and find um, the current through REQ3. I don't really care so much about this one because we can figure out the component, the current going through there at any time because it's just two and five. We already know two, we already know five. We can figure out the current going through that component at any point. And I don't need to know it. It doesn't help us at all. So 
VREQ3 is equal to IREQ3 times REQ3. Now, okay, I'm gonna, one more disclaimer. If you feel lost, solve the entire circuit. I, dang it, Duncan. <laughs> Pretty soon all of you are going to be talking on the live stream while we're in class. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's awful. Communicating with the Russians. <sighs> all right, so we know this, we know this, we know this. What is VREQ3? It's 2.5. It's the voltage between node 2 and node 5. Okay? because it goes between node two and node five. We know node two and node five. So it's 2.5 volts across this. All right, so IREQ3 is equal to VREQ3, which is 2.5, divided by REQ3, which is 100. So IREQ3 is equal to 2.5 divided by 100, which is equal to 0 0.025 amps. Okay, awesome. Ah, pff, my mask is tickling my nose today. All right, now we know the current through this component. We know the current that's going through this loop, which is what's necessary to expand in series. Okay? So we know the current going through this loop because it is the same as the current going through this loop. It's the nice thing about expanding in series, okay? So this current that we just solved, whoop, is the current going through these two resistors, all right? Which is great because this allows us to solve for VR4, well, V4, which is the only other one that we need, although I am gonna solve for V3. Okay, so we know the current going through here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this resistor right here, which is R6, and I'm gonna just plug the current in. So VR6 is equal to IR6 times R6. What is IR6? It's equal to 0 0.025. R6 is 50, so this equals 1.25? Okay. Now, how do we take this and put it into our node voltage equation, our node voltage table? Where does this show up? What nodes does R6 act between? It's between four and five, right? So we know V4 minus V5 is equal to VR6, right? Well, V5 is zero. VR6, as we just calculated, is 1.25. So we know VR4, well, V4 is 1.25 volts. This is all we need, but I'm gonna solve the resistance equation for the last one, well, the, for this one here, because now that we know the voltage at four, and the voltage at two, we can figure out what the voltage is here, and then step back and figure out three, okay? Which I'm just gonna go ahead and do for funsies. So, knowing the voltage at four, VREQ1 is equal to IREQ1 times REQ1, okay? And that means IREQ1 is equal to VREQ1 divided by REQ1, which is what? Because it's f between four and two, it's 2.5 minus 1.25, which is 1.25 volts divided by 150, which gives you a really gross number.
0.0083333. Okay. And that's the current going through this branch. Now we can take the current going through this branch and we can solve for, I'm going to solve for VR3 so that we can just add it to V4. So VR3 is equal to IR3 times R3. IR3 is that current over there, 0 0.008333 times 50, which is equal to 0 0.4167 volts. Okay, I think it just grew off by a factor of 10. I think that's all that happened. Now we add this to V4 to get V3. So 1.25 is equal to 1.667. Okay. Now I can go ahead and just say 2 and 4. I'm just going to write them directly in for A and B. This one is 2.5. This one is 1.25, which means the voltage between A and B is 1.25 volts. And that's VOC. Okay. So we have solved the first circuit. Do you need me to explain anything again? We good to go, Ivana? Okay. You're sitting behind some tall guys, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Writing at the bottom of the board, too. All right, so we've solved one of our two circuits that we have to solve. I am now going to erase the board and keep this. I will say that the second circuit we have to solve is much simpler. Much. Much. Yeah, don't worry, I'm live streaming this so you can watch videos later. But you'll be able to go and I'll be done with this problem. Okay, so all of this has to do with the open circuit. So none of it's relevant when we go back and solve the short circuit. All right, so let's do this again. But this time, let's short circuit A and B, okay? They're connected. Huh? It is alive. Ah. Oh. Just made my heart go grow like three sizes. <sighs> my students understand culture. <sighs> you may suck as engineers, but you understand culture. I just said that on YouTube. <laughs> Dang. All right, well, whatever. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this circuit without doing any of the equivalents. I'm just going to redraw it, recognizing that the voltage between 2 and 4 is the same. Which means node 3 is gone, node 2 and node 4 merge. R5, R3, and R2 will have zero resist, they will have zero current through them. At all. We still will probably have a current between these two because it's between 2 and 5, not 2 and 4. But none of these three resistors matter anymore. So I'm just going to redraw them as if they weren't even there. Okay? So, first circuit, this is R1. We get here, we're just going to directly short those two. And there's our new circuit. Okay? Here's R1, here's R4, and here's R6. We lost three resistors, which does make this simpler. All we need to know is what is the current going through this branch right here, which, okay, we'll figure that out. I can even, I can pull a Jeremy and I can redraw this so that it's a little bit nicer looking. Can you give me like five more minutes? Yes. Okay. 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 
Because then I'll, you can't, I mean, you can watch the very end of this, but like you're already here. I'm, I'm working through this. Okay, so our first equivalent system is we've got these two in parallel because they both start at the same node and end at the same node. So I'll just combine them. So first equivalent series circuit is this one where this is REQ1. Here REQ1, 1 over REQ1 is equal to 1 over R4 plus 1 over R6, which is equal to 1 over 100 plus 1 over 50, which is equal to 3 over 100, or 100 over 3, which means REQ1 is equal to 33.3 ohms. Okay. As I said last time, I'm not going to continue to go backward. Because if we combine these in series, we're going to remove a node. And in order to expand it, we need to know the current. We already know the current. Because again, if we do KCL over this circuit, what you'll find is that the current going in, out of this component goes into this component, goes into this component. They all have the same current. So we already know IS. IS is equal to 0.05. So we know the voltage REQ1. Okay, so VREQ1 is equal to IREQ1 times REQ1, which is equal to 0.05 times 33.3, which uh, is a number that can be calculable using mathematics. Um, depending on the device that you plan on using to calculate your mathematics, uh, It's 1.665 volts. Okay. So if I go back and rewrite this table, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A, B, we know 5 is 0. Calculating VREQ1, what is this node right here? That's node 2, right? Probably. Yeah, what is what is this? That's two, right? Yeah. So that means it's 1.665. Is that right? Yeah. The volts. That also means that 3 and 4 are both 1.665 volts because they're all at the same voltage. That's nice. Okay, so now that we know the voltage, we can expand in parallel. Again, you have to know the voltage in order to expand in parallel. Once you know that voltage, you can figure out the current. So I'm going to find VR6 is equal to IR6 times R6. Here, I know VR6, I'm solving for IR6, it's equal to VR6 divided by R6 is equal to 1.665 divided by R6 is 50, um, which means that uh, 1.665 divided by 50 is equal to 0 0.0333, repeating amps. Okay. Huh? I It wouldn't be 5 volts at the source. No. It's going to put out a different voltage as soon as we short it. It's weird to think about, but that's the case. Okay, so we got 33.3.0333 amps, and then we're done. This is the short circuit current. How do I know that? Well, because that's the amount of current that's going through this, by the way, that we shorted, straight into this resistor. We don't have to go all the way back here. 
because this is the short. This is A, this is B. And we know the current between them, okay? And it's equal to 0.0333 amps. Okay, now that we know these two, how do we calculate the Thevenin equivalent resistance? We do use the Ohm's law equation. Do you remember what it is? RT is equal to V over V O C over I S C, which is equal to 1.25 divided by 0 0.0333 which is equal to 37.537, repeating. It's a gross number, but that's ohms. That's all three components. That's the equivalent circuit. Any questions about this? All right, you guys can go to class. I'm gonna shuffle the live stream. Ha, ha, ha.